Good morning, I'm Cody Hendrickson, and today we're going to be taking a look at the new updates to Xcode 12, so we can make a quick project in that and see some of the changes that have existed in that. It's a different from what we've seen in Xcode 11 and some of the other versions. So let's go ahead and make a new project with that. So we'll go ahead and create a new Xcode project right here. And we're going to go ahead, as you can see right here, just right in the beginning start project, we can see there's a new change. Instead of like having single view app and multi view app, we simply have the idea of app and document app. So there's some changes on the actual notations right here in the menu itself. You can also notice up here at the very top of the bar, we can see explicitly we're doing the idea that this is more along the lines of the integration of how Xcode and um, Swift UI is going to be the new built framework for all the iOS or Mac OS based products. So Mac is going to have a, a more tighter integration across all their projects. So you can see that right here, just when you're actually making an actual application structure itself. We'll go ahead and choose the default standard of app just like normal. Go ahead and hit next to go from there. Um, our next pet looks pretty much the same. As you can see, I've got my product name and the structure right there. I'm just doing a preview app right here. So preview as the name of the product and my organization identifier. Make sure you have something there so it just has ctech.preview for that bundle. And remember that has to be unique for every single app you make. Same rules apply as always. But here we have where, uh, one of the differences we see when we're actually making the project. We have choices for interface, lifecycle, and language. Now, we're using Swift UI. We could also still choose the storyboard style if you wanted to actually build something that's going to be backwards compatible with some of the older devices. Because remember, if you're working with Swift UI, that only works on the newer set of iOS devices. You can't use anything pre-13 with uh, Swift UI. So it's a bit of a change. So if you have some older devices, you want to be developing apps for older systems, you want to make sure you make that change using storyboard and change your approach appropriately. So we'll choose Swift UI on that. Because we're using SwiftUI, of course, we want our lifecycle to match, that being Swift UI app. Oh, that makes sense. And finally, since we're using SwiftUI, the only language choice is, of course, going to be Swift. And it should only be choice. We don't want to have Objective-C land here, no. And we don't have to worry about using core data or tests right now because it's just a demo app, so we don't have to uh, do anything with that. We'll go ahead and hit Next, and we'll see what happens as we start our project. Again, just like normal, it tells us we uh, prompts us for we want to save. Um, I don't choose to make a Git repository on my projects because I handle my um, source control externally using GitHub. But if you want to do all your source control internally within Xcode, you can completely handle that yourself. I just use GitHub, especially because I'm working with students on that to make it a little bit easier. But you can have that integrated within your project as well. We'll go ahead and hit create right. Excuse me, create right there as well, and it makes the app. And as you can see right here, it starts off our project immediately. I'm going to go ahead and just take up a bit more space on the screen. And you can see that right here over on the left in our navigation explorer, we can see explicitly that we have a very different environment. We, instead of having appdelegate.sif, uh, scenedelegate.swift, and then the assets, SE assets, and the content view, and the info.ps, and all that stuff right there, we only have the preview, um, or if we name our project, app.swift, content view.swift, which is just like the previous one, it's just the little demo page. Um, <clears throat> we have asset success, the assets, and info.plist. So it's a little bit different right here. So let's take a look at what we have to do. Um, info.plist still looks the same, just like normal assets, the XE assets still looks the same. And so we're going to continue hiding those files out away in our resources folder. So again, same process right here. We're going to command click on both of them, right click and choose new group from selection. And we'll put it inside the resources folder. And boom, if I go ahead and hit command B to build my app, it fails. I do command five to take me to my error screen and it's the same regular error, build input file can't be found. Um, unfortunately, Xcode does not support man, um, automatically updating the location of its info.plist. You have to manually tell it where to go. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my navigator pane inside my project navigator, go up to my project properties right here, in this case it's named preview. And over here on the build settings section, just like normal, I click on build settings. If I scroll down, I can go to packaging directly or I can simply just type info.plist, it'll take me right to it. And just like normal, I have to change my value inside the um, for the info.plist file for its location, and I have to reflect the fact that I moved it into the resources folder. So if I just type in resources slash info.plist, and out of that, and I'll hit save, and I'll go back over here, and I'm inside my project again. I rebuild it. My build was successful. I can go ahead and run my app right now, and immediately we'll have the lovely simulator start up and load. It's going to launch the preview. It'll pop up up here on the screen in just a second. Hey, there's my app and there's Hello World. It has absolutely nothing in it because that's all it says to do. But we've got our app immediately right there. So we know that it works already. Um, I'm going to continue using my regular model view controller approach. I've been working with all my projects. I know Swift, especially Swift UI, is not officially MVC uh, anymore. We're looking for an MVVM structure. But when I'm explaining stuff with students, I like the model view controller analogy. It makes it really easy to explain concepts with students. So I'm going to still continue using that. Let's take a look at the two other files we have left over here, the ones that we haven't actually looked at yet. And this is what we're going to see one of the changes. So one of the things that we have, I think, is really nice actually about the new update to Swift, um, Xcode 12 and the new Swift UI is we're explicitly calling out where main is. It's right here in whatever we named our project app.swift. 
hey, I've got this at main annotation right here. It's explicitly calling out that I know I'm talking about the main. This is where I'm starting off my app. You can notice right here that it conforms the app protocol. And the app protocol looks a lot like the, C, um, the uh, view protocol. It requires a var named body, but instead of conforming to view for that var, this one has to conform to the scene protocol. But this is the same basic approach. Inside there, we have our window group, which is going to hold our content view, which of course we'll be naming to actually be reflective of what we're actually talking about. But that's all we have to do right there. So I go ahead and I update my uh, squiggles, make it so I like it a little bit better. And we go ahead and move that out of the way. And then in content view.swift, same thing approach right here. So I've got that struct right there. And it has this one conforms to view, and it has the same basic approach. And I'll go ahead and fix my squigs on this one too. And so inside here, my content view, this is just that quick demo view. Again, you want to make sure you rename content view to be reflective of more of what you're actually working with inside your project. And since this is a preview, we'll go ahead and command click on content view, choose rename. And instead of having it be content view, we'll have it be pre um, demo view. Because it's a demo, it's a preview. So demo view, and as you can see right here, automatic renames those things right there. I'm gonna go ahead and add though the documentation comments for that as well, because hey, that reflects specifically for it as well. So now instead of having content view, it's right there. Go ahead and hit enter, it renames it automatically. Now notice that it did not change the name of the struct right here for our preview provider, because the only thing that has to name um, beyond that is it has to conform to the preview provider protocol. So it doesn't have to actually rename this. You can rename this if you want, just by going down here and clicking it, because there's never any name to the actual, or reference to the actual struct of it. It simply just goes for the static uh, reference previews to access that information to start the demo for it. So that's all that goes right there. So go ahead and hit save right there, and we'll rebuild again and be successful, fantastic stuff. And then again, we're gonna take these two files right here and we're gonna move them into our controller group just like we have been doing. So I'll right click on them, make a new group from selection and choose controller as its name. And boom, we rerun my app right here. Stop the existing copy, make sure it reruns again and look how amazing that is. It runs just like it was right there. So again, just taking a look at what we did, we have a couple uh, changes to um, Xcode 11 or 10 when we're working with this. We no longer have app delegate or scenedelegate.swift inside a resources folder. Those are out of the way. Hooray, we've got one less thing to have to worry about or track. Inside our controller group, we have our new um, app.swift, whoever we're working with, the name of that app. And it has a protocol that it conforms to of app, which means it has to have a scene inside it. And that's basically just our main. So it's like our runner if we're talking Java land. And then of course we have a regular view that we start off with, we load our components. And for the basic stuff right here, everything we've been working with with Swift UI will continue working right here inside Xcode 12. You can do all the stuff we've been doing. This is just a quick little introduction to how you can actually make something happen and work with this and do some cool stuff. So again, hope this is helpful for you. Do some fun things, make some great apps and have a great day. Cheers.